So let's pretend our class starts from here. The, all, most of them are, except perhaps, perhaps this um, repeat of what I said anyway, so perhaps it's okay. Okay, so from now on, what we are going to do is to look at individual uh, universes. I don't, let's keep the left hand side. Since we did all the hard work last time, our discussion now will be easier. Okay, um, matter only universe. Let's start with matter only universe. This is W is equal to zero. Uh, first of all, from here, what we will know is P zero is now two over three H zero inverse. So the age of universe is smaller than over time by this amount. That's how we interpret this. And horizon distance P0 uh, I, horizon distance. Let, let me write here. This horizon distance was C over H zero and two one plus three W. So from here, Omega W is zero. I have two C over. To C over H zero or I want to get rid of H zero, so I have uh, three C T zero. So in matter dominant universe, this C T zero is the distance horizon distance when there is no expansion, you know, speed of light times T zero, that gives me the distance that the light has traveled during the time T zero, if the universe was static. But we have a factor three, and where is that from? That's from the expansion itself. So in the case of matter only universe, the um, effect of expansion give you extra two C T zero instead of just one C T zero. So that's what we could learn from this calculation. And here, if we are interested in scale factor in terms of time, so this is now t over t zero. I have two thirds. And in figure five point two, we just solve. Uh,
that curve. Now, if you see see a galaxy, well, on any object that emits the light, uh, a source at redshift z, then the proper distance. Today, uh, which one I want to use? So let's try to use this. I have zero, zero, so we see T zero. I have one minus. This times zero power of, excuse me, so power of one three. So it's like uh, one minus T E over T zero one three. Um, let's see, where did I, I want to replace this in terms of one over square one plus Z. So the reason is the definition of Z is one plus z is equal to a t zero, which is one, so I don't have to write over a t of time at the emission of this source. And and we are taking a ratio of time and the ratio is one third, but A itself is two thirds. So because of this factor two, you have square root here. And right now one Z is inversely proportional to the square. So the this should give you inverse of the uh, proportionality. Therefore, you, you have this factor. So this should be equal to each other. What that means? That means we can write, uh, we can use this to C over H0, one minus square root one plus Z. Should be the relation. And if I'm sharing the screen again uh, with this, share. Um, okay, so this is basically what I am plotting. Um, so proper distance normalized by this H zero over C because I have that factor. And on the Y, I'm sorry, <laughs> on, the, on the X axis, I am plotting the redshift. That's why I wanted to express my uh, proper distance in terms of the redshift. So by definition, as of today, 
Red shift is zero. So today is not seen here. If you go to the limit of left hand side, you are approaching to today. But as Z increases, again, we are looking back to the past. Or in other words, we are looking at further and further away galaxies or any uh, light source apart from us. So the behavior is summarized here. So this is, uh, we are talking about batter. That's the, I guess, blue, blue dotted curve right here. And since we brought this up, we can also take a look at um, radiation dominant part and empty part we already saw. And this is the uh, cosmological constant dominant universe. And if we can also take a look at this uh, since I am showing here. Uh, so proper distance at the time of emission can always be obtained by a uh, time proper distance as at the time of today divided by uh, one plus Z. So that's why you have this term. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. This is uh, not the matter dominant. Matter dominant is different. Ah, that's why I was confused. Maybe I could. Uh, Yeah, uh, this one we already discussed. This one, this is what we got. And I was trying to say is, okay, this one. So proper distance at the time of emission you have this extra factor of um, one plus Z in the bottom. All right, so let me go back to where we were. What else do we want to talk about in matter dominant universe? Uh, all right, that, uh, one more thing is, I forgot to mention it in the plot that I was showing. If we take a look at DPTE as a function of Z, and remember, I am plotting this on log scale on Y axis, as well as also log scale in X axis. And then I let me. So I have uh, H zero over C as the normalization and radiation uh, matter. So I have something like this. And the maximum happens at Z is five point five divided by four. And that Z DP is A over. A over 27 
C top divided by H zero will be something you will get. I think this is this will be one of your homework. So it's a little strange to fully understand because proper distance as you move back, there are some, you know, it's, it makes sense to have an increase of the horizontal uh, horizon distance at the time of emission. But if you move further away, it actually decreases. And that's because I think I said it last time. That's because now the, uh, the extension of universe plays plays a role in having this shape in such a way. If you look even further away at the time of emission, proper distance was actually smaller than this part, or then it was actually closer. To us. Okay. Um, all right. So that's all I have to say about the matter dominant universe, matter only universe. And now let's move to radiation only universe. So let's. We use this part. Now, radiation. Only on three. All right. Um, so let's start with the H of the universe. One plus one third is four divided by three. And three is cancelled. I have uh, one over two eight zero. So the age of the universe for the radiation only is half of the Hubble time. Matter only it was two third, but now it's only one one. One half. And then let's say rise rise in distance. Um, you can get it from here. So it's a uh, one third to two over two. So that's simply C over H zero. Or H zero is um, two C T zero. So, so I'm going to make a similar argument. In the case of radiation only universe, the horizon distance is now 2CT0. So it's twice of the length of static universe. For the matter, only universe, it was three times the CT zero. 
But in the case of the radiation, it got smaller. Okay. What else do you want to know? Okay. So we want to know A, let's call R, T. Uh, that's from here. So I have T over T zero. And one third plus one, that's one half. We had two third for the matter only. Now for the radiation, we have uh, time power of 0.5. And proper distance as of today. Um, that is how I want to express this. Where is it? Um, so here, one, two, two, three, Ah, okay. No, you can you can do this. Uh, T emission to T zero. Uh, one over A. It's uh, T Z T over T zero minus one half D T. Calculating directly by definition, and this will give you. Uh, you have to work on it but it's gonna be C H zero C over one plus C. And if you take a look at the figure 5.3, this formula can be used to plot figure 5.3 for radiation only universe. And DPTE is C over H zero. I have one more term. So I'm gonna have square and Z. So, if you calculate the time, not time derivative, D, D, T over D, Z is constant. I have one plus Z power of four. And I have to differentiate this. I have one plus Z square and minus z and differentiate this. So I have vector two coming down, one plus z. So I have c over h zero. Um, there's this guy and this is coming three. The denominator is not all of our interest, but let's write that out. And I have one minus Z. So again, so what I'm trying to say is when at Z is equal to one, my D DP over DZ, which is the slope of this curve proper distance at the time of emission becomes zero. So this 
this equal to one dp e becomes maximum value and that maximum value is of basically c over h zero one over c one two two square four so you can check the figure three uh, five point three see if i actually plot the curve correctly or not by taking a look at this fact. Uh, we want to say something more on a radiation only universe because. Um, Now let's get rid of this. <coughs> oh, just. Um. By point trying to see if we calculated energy density of any single component at any given time that was turned out to be let me use different color uh, one over six pi one plus w power of square and we did this in terms of Planck energy, Planck distance, power of three, and we normalize this in terms of time in terms of Planck time. And that was minus two. So that was our generic result of the energy density for single component universe. Now we are talking about radiation only universe. So we put um, W is equal to one third, that gives me four uh, square. I'm sorry, six pi. One, I have sixteen, and from three nine. So that's two three. So I have three and two times sixteen thirty two. So I have. Three over thirty two pi. And then rest of the other term. E P over L P part of three T over one time minus two. Um so numerically. This turns out to be 
point, point, or three and no more digit. What does it mean? At T is equal to TP. This is fairly close to Planck density. We can define this to be Planck density. It turns out to be numerically um, three times power of and to be part of one, three, three electron volt meter minus three. Huge number. Do you remember the mass of one proton? MP is very roughly speaking, it's one GeV. And the GeV is nine electron volts. So this corresponds to 10 to the, I get rid of nine, it's still big number, uh, 624 protons. Um, if I remind you, Planck length, LP was, we discussed this in chapter one. So T, never mind on uh, the vector is minus 35 meter. So in minus 35 meter cubic, oh, I'm sorry, if, uh, I'm sorry. So this is meter power of a cubic. So one meter, one meter, uh, one meter cubic. I have this amount of protons. Uh, you still don't know, don't get the feeling. So to make your mass of proton in SI unit is something 10 to minus 30, uh, I think 28, doesn't really matter. So this corresponds to, I can still get rid of 28, so it's 10 to the uh, 28, 4, so 96 kilogram meter minus three. So this density refers to 10 to the 96 kilograms when the volume is this big. Maybe one meter is this big. So it's a huge density. Uh, let's calculate one more thing. That is, now I erase the right hand side. So we are talking about still radiation only universe. For the radiation, we could say something more because we discussed a lot about photons in chapter two. 
And one of the results was from the black body radiation. Black body. We discussed photon energy density, key, photon number density, and so on. So let's use some of the results. So the energy density that was from essentially uh, Bose-Einstein relations or Planck black body curve, pi square k power four, and I never remember this, 15, 15 speed of light cubic h bar cubic. What I do remember is t power of four or photon um, energy density. Let's say um, since we are still talking about radiation only universe, the uh, energy Planck energy scale is solely from the photons, and energy is. Boltzmann's constant times the temperature at the Planck scale. So now we have two different expressions for the energy from Feynman equation from black body radiation, and they have to be equal to each other. So we are saying that now this has to be equal to which one? Uh, three over three, 32 pi EP over LP cubic and T over Planck time minus power of two. And there is a typo in the present lecture notes, there's a, this, in the lecture note, you'll find this is not three, but two, but that's a typo. There are many typos I am finding, and some of them I tell you in the classroom, but maybe not all of them. So, you don't, you shouldn't trust me. <laughs> All right. I want to re-express in terms of temperature. Um, let's say power of four and this to the others. complicated, so I have to put everything to the left. First thing is three times 15 gives me 45. Uh, and then I have C3 H bar three. And I have 32. Pi, I have pi power of two here, that gives me power of three. And then I have EP over LP three. It's not constant. Uh, I have K power of four
that's it. But well, now I want to do the following thing. I want to make out of EP power of four, then I have to have extra E P cubic. And then T over T one minus two. The reason that I want to do this is um, I want to do I forgot. <laughs> uh, I did it yesterday, but I forgot. Um, if I replace EP to the this, I have K power of four, TP power of four. So I can get rid of this. Um, oh, 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 ah, okay, now I know. Um, I need one more thing. In chapter one, ah, I don't remember things that I did last time. Hmm. So there is a good reason. So let's calculate this. LP, the leg plank length. is gh gh bar over speed of light power of three um on a button and plank nrh is defined to be M Planck C power of two and M Planck was H over C over G one third. I'm sorry, one over two. And I have C square here. So the what I'm going to do is the following. So I'll replace uh, uh, there are several things that I have in my brain that uh, something is strange, something is strange. Uh, okay, so I'm, now everything is clear. <laughs> so I'll replace EP power of four times K T P power of four. And this K, power of four will be canceled out with this k power of four. And I have Planck time power of four. And this guy, LP power of three, EP power of three. LP power of three is G H bar over C three, three over two times 
um, want to calculate LP3 times EP3, which is appearing right here, times EP power of three. So I have H bar C over G three over two and C power of six. So you'll see that this G will be canceled out. And I have H here, here, power of three. I have C out of three, and that's three over two. So that will give me minus nine over two plus three over two plus six. That will give me three. So this is H bar three C three. So you will cancel with this term. Now I remember. It's just a computation. So my left hand side was t power of four. Now I want to express in terms of t. <laughs> then I have this vector 45 power of divided by. 32 pi 3 becomes whatever this is out of 104. And I have only one TP. And then P over TP minus two, that will become minus one over two. Numerically, this will be something like point four six TP. P over TP minus one over two. We are getting into our conclusion, so wait a little more. So the mean and per quarter, the mean and We discussed this in chapter two about 2.7 Boltzmann temperature. You can rewrite in terms of E one. T over T P minus one over T. This one I will not demonstrate. We discussed this uh, in chapter one. So what we are trying to do is we want to get an expression for number density by um by doing this. Energy density divided by average mean energy per photon that will give me number density. So that will turn out to be numerically 0 0.025. P3. T over TP. Uh, 
993 over 2. So ET was from there. You have minus 2, and E mean has a dependence of my, minus 1 half, but E mean is at the bottom. So this vector comes from that cancellation. Now, what we want to do is if this P goes to arbitrarily small, smaller than TP, it's minus two. So S. P goes to zero. Energy density goes to infinity. So your, your theory now breaks down. A Friedman equation with radiation only universe predicts the yeah, energy density will be infinite at T goes to zero. And Friedman equation was from we didn't discuss, but because we didn't discuss general theory of relativity, but the general theory of relativity has nothing to do with uh, quantum mechanics. So at, at the energy density, as T goes to arbitrarily small, your energy density is blowing up. So that's where your theory, general theory of relativity breaks down. And we sort of know this because general theory of relativity doesn't deal with quantum mechanical phenomena at all. And the other part is the horizon distance. This was as we said, this is two times speed of light times T zero. Uh, this is today too. At any given time, it's two CT. We can rewrite this in terms of Planck distance and do I want to do it? Okay. T over TP. I replaced um, C in terms of LP over TP. So this is a distance scale. So volume scale will be proportional to this power of so, uh, three pi, four pi over three, the horizon power of three by definition. So this is approximately 34 as a numerical the power of three value and T over TP cubic. So final equation that I'm going to write. The number of photons at very early universe, that's basically horizon volume that we calculated times the number density that we obtained here. So you will get uh, about 0.9 P over TP power of 
three over two because we have factor three here, but nt has this minus three over two overall factor is this. So what does it mean? The total number of photons at horizon volume is order one at t is equal to tp. So you have, you have to deal with one photon, two photons, and so on. Not a lot of photons. So now this scale is the scale of quantum mechanics. But quantum mechanics is non-relativistic and we don't know how to deal with quantum mechanics in curved space-time yet. So if you are challenged, this is one of the uh, research area that you may find interesting. So today I will finish up right here. We discussed, we reviewed single component universe. We discussed matter only universe and we discussed the radiation only universe. Uh, next Thursday, we will discuss um, lambda only universe and that will give you sort of a single universe, single universes. And after that, we finally discuss multi-component universe. And the computation will get unfortunately only more complicated. So don't be fooled by lengthy computation. You have to focus on not only the computation, but also physics behind. All right, so I'll stop here. And any question? Stop recording.